family, something big is happening in Uganda. And I don't just mean politically or economically. I'm talking about the future of Africa's mind, our data, our intelligence, and our digital sovereignty. Uganda is stepping boldly into the AI race with what is being called the Aeonian Project, a project that could become Africa's first true AI factory. Our first shipment of more than 3,000 GPUs will be arriving in South Africa next month, and they will be installed and ready for service by the end of June. Thereafter, we intend to install another 10,000 units across five sites in our existing infrastructure. So we're not having to build new uh, uh, data centers. Uh, we've been building these already. The ones in South Africa are ready. Uh, Kenya, I was with the minister this morning. Our first data center on the African continent was in Kenya. So we are very pleased that we will be building in Kenya this year, and we also will build in Egypt this year. So we hope this compute capacity answers the question, where will Africa get its compute? From its entrepreneurs, that's our job. We, we build. Which is absolutely amazing. And I want you to think about this for a moment. For centuries, Africa's resources, gold, oil, diamonds were taken, processed, and profited from elsewhere. Now we have a new resource, data, and we're not being left behind. Will we finally process it right here at home is the question that a lot of Africans are asking. Here's what's happening. Uganda is launching a 10 megawatt sovereign AI supercomputer powered by surplus electricity from the Karuma hydroelectric power plant. Now, this system will allow Africa to keep critical computing power on the continent instead of depending on foreign tech giants to actually store, process, and profit from our data. And you know, data is like the new gold, right? You see, this AI factory will support healthcare, education, research, and so much more. Even better, it will help build AI models in African languages trained on African data. What, mean, what this means is that our tech will finally reflect our own realities, not what the Western world is saying. It doesn't stop there. The facility will be connected to a 2,500 kilometer fiber optic backbone linking Uganda to Kenya and Tanzania, creating a strong digital highway across East Africa. An AI supercomputer will soon be launched in South Africa by Cassava Technology as part of what is said to be Africa's first AI factory. It is the first stage of the company's plan to bring AI hardware to its data centers across the continent. The AI factory will be built on NVIDIA's cutting-edge computing and AI software and is expected to be up and running in South Africa by June 2025, Cassava announced, with plans to also expand its AI services to Egypt, Kenya, Morocco, and Nigeria. With this crucial AI infrastructure, Cassava aims to empower African businesses and researchers and help Africa take full advantage of the fourth industrial revolution. Family, listen, doesn't that sound like a digital renaissance, literally? You see, this is more than just a tech story. This is a sovereignty story. Think about it. For decades, Africa has exported raw materials, imported finished products at a massive cost to our economies. When it comes to data, we have been doing the exact same thing exporting raw data to servers in the West, only to have it processed and sold back to us through apps, ads, and algorithms. But projects like this, the Aeonian project, these are projects that are saying, no, this time we will mint our intelligence right here in Africa. And Uganda isn't alone. Zimbabwe's richest man, Strive Masiiwa, through Cassava Technologies, is also building AI infrastructure in partnership with NVIDIA, with plans to roll out in South Africa, Nigeria, where I am, Egypt, Kenya, and Morocco. So now let me ask you, if Africa is finally building its own digital factories, will we seize the moment to actually take control of our own future, or will we let outsiders actually define what AI means for us? I actually hope that's not going to be the case. This is not just about Uganda. It's about all of us.
on the continent and in the diaspora. AI is shaping the future of medicine, education, finance, security, even politics. And if we're not at the table building it, training it, owning it, then we're simply being programmed by someone else's code. And that's dangerous. Let's be real. Western tech companies are not necessarily neutral, right? Their algorithms have been shown to carry bias, racial bias that affects black people disproportionately. We've spoken about this on this channel time and time again. So imagine the power of Africa developing its own models, free from those biases rooted in African reality, serving African interests. Imagine a future where our children's languages from Swahili to Yoruba to Luganda are fully understood by AI, where our health systems use African data to solve African diseases and where our own universities have access to cutting-edge research tools without begging for permission or paying exorbitant fees to Silicon Valley, for instance. Just imagine. Wouldn't that be a game changer? It will be absolutely phenomenal. And I would actually love that, that to be the story of Africa family. Here's what I love most about this story. It is a story of Africa moving from consumption to creation. For once, we're not just users of technology. We're builders, we're owners, we're innovators. And it just keeps developing from here. Yes, there will be challenges. We already know questions about governance, cybersecurity, and whether these projects will truly benefit everyday Africans. These are questions that are being asked, but we cannot be afraid of progress, right? Instead of fearing AI, we must shape it. We must be at the forefront. Instead of outsourcing our intelligence, we must invest in it. Because if the future will be driven by data and algorithms, then Africa must make sure that she's driving as well. It is imperative that Africa must make this a priority. What do you think? Will projects like a union project finally give Africa the digital independence that we've been waiting for for far too long? Or do you think that we still have a long way to go before we can actually say we control our technological destiny? Let's talk about it in the comments. What are your thoughts? My name is Ife I'm reporting from Nigeria. It is the African Diaspora News Channel. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. See you on the next story.